Uh, good morning, everyone. I hope I'm all the way off for you to get what I'm saying. All right, this morning, we're going to be talking about the biological membrane. We're going to be talking about the biological membrane. Uh, So we're going to be talking about the biological membrane. I hope my handwriting is very clear. Is it very clear? All right. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the biological membrane, as I rightly said. And uh, basically, the biological membrane is very, very important to virtually uh, all cells we have on the body system. Uh, okay, the matter is a bit faint. All right, I will increase the, I will increase the level of my handwriting right now. Okay. So I think, is this okay? How this is okay? All right, so we want to talk about biological membrane. So what are biological membrane? Or what is biological membrane? Uh, generally, biological membrane is one of very important uh, substances we have in the body system in which provides a protection for virtually all the cells we have in our body system. And uh, without this covering, a lot of cells will remain unprotected. And that is the reason why biological membrane is very, very important. And also is that uh, this can be likened to a nation in which we have the, you know, the borders. It can be likened to a nation in which you have borders in that surrounds that nation. And by the presence of this border, it controls what goes in and what goes out of that country. That is the major function of the biological membrane. It regulates what goes in and what goes out of the cell. And that serves as a protective function of the biological membrane we have in our body system, both plant and animal. All right. And uh, when we were dealing with uh, the structure of lipids, we did mention in the class that we have very important phospholipids that plays a very significant role in the functional structure of a biological membrane. They play a very significant role in the functional structure of a biological membrane. So we are going to be talking about the structure of the biological membrane, the relevance of the phospholipids to the structural biological membrane, and also associated with proteins that also play a very significant role so that molecules, ions, can move from one part of the cell to the other. That is the basic knowledge about membrane as it were. All right, I want to make a drawing now. I'm going to try to make a drawing as to what a biological membrane uh, I want to make a drawing, and we have said basically the basically the major constituents of these biological membranes are one. The major constituents of our biological membrane is one: phospholipids. Phospholipids. Two associated proteins, associated proteins, and to some extent we have some carbohydrates, carbohydrates that are complex together to form our biological membrane. Like uh, we have the glycosporin, the glycocalyx, at the surface of our biological membrane. All of this play a very important role to make sure that the biological membrane performs its major function of being selectively permeable 
and also regulates what comes in and comes out. And the from basic knowledge is that the biological membrane has a kind of an opening inside them that allows a particular size of molecules to pass through it. And then usually is a if the biological membrane has a channel inside of it that allows structure to pass through a two point to eight nanometer. So what that happens to structures that are bigger than this? What that happens to the structures that are bigger than this size of pop? How do they move through the biological membrane? That is a question we need to have a thinking about. All right, we're going to think it out and we're going to get to the knowledge of how these structures get across the biological membrane, even when they are of larger size as a molecule. All right, and uh, before we go into uh, uh, the functions, before we go into the structure as it were, I think uh, we should also talk about uh, some important characteristics of our biological membrane. Number one, we say they are very selectively permeable. They are very selectively permeable. They select what passes through it, what goes through it, what crosses that membrane. They selectively regulate that. Another important function of our biological membrane is that they participate in what we call cell burden. They participate in cell burden. They participate in cell burden. So let's go to a typical uh, structural representation of a biological membrane. Typical representation of a biological membrane. So usually, our biological membrane is made up of lipid bilayer. It's made up of lipid bilayers. These are the layers that have been formed in association with some important proteins. And these thought together makes our biological membrane. All right. All right, this is a lipid, the structure of a lipid bilayer, our biological membrane, all right? And this biological membrane has a lipid bilayer, all right? And this lipid bilayer has what we call the hydrophilic head, hydrophilic head. Hydrophilic head, hydrophilic head. And what do we mean by the hydrophilic head? The hydrophilic head talks about uh, the polar head, which is made up of phosphates, and which confers to this lipid structure ability to allow soluble molecules to pass through it. And that makes it more soluble to quite a lot of molecules that can actually penetrate this membrane. So let's try to set this place as our outer layer. And this place is the inner layer. Part of them in acres, acres, million, acres. Here, medium, right? So basically, basically, the phosphate group is bounded. The phosphate group is bounded to fat 
starting a side group which are called the hydrophobic, hydrophobic, I for hydrophobic tails, hydrophobic tails, hydrophobic tails. Hydrophobic tails. We have the first trait group, which is hydrophilic. Hydrophilic polar hair. 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 And that talks about the ability to allow substance to be soluble. And by this ability, substance can move from the outer aqueous environment to the inner aqueous environment of the biological membrane. All right? And we have the hydrophilic tail. The hydrophilic tail. Hydrophilic tail. This is the hydrophilic tail, which is hydrophilic. Hydrophobic in nature. That means it has phobia for water. So, like the root by the structure, is that this very tail is not allowing substance to be soluble as it were. Substance cannot actually be soluble in water. That is hydrophobic tail of this biological membrane. The orientation of the lipid bilayer, the orientation. The orientation of the lipid bilayer is just fashioned in such a way that you have the tail which are hydrophobic to be placed inside against the hydrophilic air, which are made of the polar faucet air, to be housed in such a way the tails, this are the tails, this are the hydrophobic tails. They associate with each other. They associate with each other internal or inside them so that you have the polar air displays or display outside. All right? So this is the typical structure of our biological memory. And we have said that the major constituent of this biological membrane is what? The phospholipids, T, the associated proteins. These are the major constituents of our biological membrane. So we're going to be talking about this important, uh, important phospholipids that actually complex together get oriented together in such a way the tail is displaced internally and they first polar hair are displaced externally so as to facilitate the solubility of molecules in that molecules can move from the outer part to the inner part or from the inner part to the outer part of that Biological membrane. All right? Among the characteristics of this biological membrane as a function is that uh, they bring about movement of ions across the membrane. They facilitate the movement of ions across the membrane. All right? All right, so this is a typical structure of our biological membrane. We have very important structural components of this biological membrane. We talked about the phospholipids. We also talked about uh, some proteins that are very, very important uh, that make this biological membrane. All right, so the kind of phospholipids, the kind of phospholipids that makes the biological membrane differs in terms of the outer layer, or what we call the outer leaflet of the biological membrane, and this place represents the inner leaflet or inner layer of the biological membrane. This is the outer layer of the bilipid layer, all right? This is the outer layer, this is the inner. 
Galilee. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, the kind of post Olympics that are present in the outer layer of this biological membrane differs from the kind of the phospholipids that are present in the inner leaflet or inner layer of the inner layer of the biological membrane. All right, do you get that? All right, this is what I'm trying to explain in here. I said, this is what I'm trying to explain in here. This is the lipid bilayer, right? This is the lipid bilayer. The lipid bilayer. The bilayer is because there are two structures of lipid arrangement coming together. There are two. And that makes it a bilayer. All right? So, what I'm saying here is that this first layer is different in terms of. The phospholipids that constitute it in comparison with a second inner layer of the biological membrane. All right? Basically, the outer layer is made up of phospholipid, phosphatida. Phosphatidyl, 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 All right, and also single, single myelin. Single my lane, single my lane, single my lane. Remember from our previous structure when we were talking about uh, the structure of the phospholipids, we did mention uh, glycerophospholipids such as phosphatidylcholine, single my lane, uh, phosphatidylectanolamine, phosphatidylinositol. All of these phospholipids play a very important role in the composition of our biological membrane. Now, we are identifying with phosphatidylcholine and sphingomalate to be predominant in the outer layer of the binary layer of a biological membrane. All right? For the, for the inner layer, it has been documented that uh, this inner layer is very rich in phospholipids such as phosphatidylinositol, phosphatidylinositol, phosphatidyl. Phosphatidylserine and also phosphatidyl phosphatidyl also phosphatidyl phosphatidyl etanol these are the arrangements, functional wise, of the kind of glycerophospholipids you will actually have in the layers of a typical biological membrane. All right? Apart from the phospholipids that participates in the structural organization of a biological membrane, we also have what we call proteins, which also play a very high significant role in the structural organization of a biological membrane, protein, a biological membrane. We have 
Three of them, basically. We have three of them, basically. One, we have what we call three of them, basically. Number one, number one is integral protein. Integral protein. Integral protein. Number two is peripheral, peripheral protein. Peripheral protein. Number three is what we call transmembrane protein. Transmembrane protein. Transmembrane protein. So these are the major type of protein that constitute the structure of function of a biological membrane. Number one, we have the integral protein. Number two, we have the peripheral protein. Number three, we have the transmembrane protein. So all of these protein are complex with the phospholipids of the typical biological membrane. All right, we have three of them, the integral protein, the fiber protein, the transmembrane protein. These are basically the two major proteins you will actually have in a typical biological membrane. And the play significant role, uh, usually, usually, we have said we have molecules that have large sites that cannot actually pass through the channel of this membrane naturally. So this is the very place in which the protein come into play. The protein being complex by a form of hydrophobic interaction they bring about large size molecules to be able to penetrate through the membrane and move in and out of the membrane. All right? So those are the major importance of uh, stuff as regards our biological membrane. So let's say our biological membrane still continues of its kind of Bow, layer, by layer, by layer, right? Right. So this is a typical representation. It's a typical representation of integral protein, integral protein, integral protein. The typical representation of the integral protein. The typical representation of the integral protein. Basically, the integral protein binds well the phospholipid by a kind of hydrophobic. Hydrophobic interaction, hydrophobic interaction, hydrophobic interaction. It binds to the glycerophore solipics by way of hydrophobic interaction. And usually, in the investigative research purposes, uh, this can be displayed away. It can be displaced away from the phospholipids by the solvents, some solvents, detergents, and uh, the naturants, usual. You can separate this integral protein away from the glycerophospholipids, in which they are binded to by a form of hydrophobic interaction. Right. Okay. So we also have what we call we also have what we call ferriferal protein. 
very fair protein, very fair protein. All right. This is a very fair protein. Very peripheral, peripheral protein. Uh, the very peripheral protein are molecularly binded to the integral protein by way of electrostatic interaction. Electrostatic interaction, and these are weak interaction as far as uh, biological knowledge and science knowledge is concerned. Uh, this is more of, uh, more of electrostatic interaction, very weak bond. So the binds of it, and also is a chip. This can also be displayed, they can be displayed away, displayed away from the internal protein, by the action of uh, some molecules such as changing the pH, changing the pH, changing the pH, and the display in a way this general protein from this, uh, you know, binded molecules. All right? Another important protein we also talk about is our. Uh, is what we call transmembrane protein. Transmembrane protein. Uh, the transmembrane protein The transmembrane protein, this is the kind of membrane protein that span through the layers of the biological membrane. They span through the layer, the double layers of a biological membrane. And uh, as we have rightly said, the play a very significant role in the movement of molecules from the outer compartment of a cell to the inner compartment of a cell. So movement can actually occur in a bi-directional way, especially molecules that are of large size. Molecules that are of large size that naturally cannot actually Cross the biological membrane. All right, so that is worth the biological membrane does to make sure that uh, structures are usually made to cross its biological layer. All right, and uh, also is that. We have said that this biological membrane, in accordance to biomolecules, or in respect to biomolecules, you can say the composition of a biological membrane is made up of protein, lipids, and carbohydrates. By percentage organization, by percentage organization, how a biological membrane carries about 60% of protein. 60% of protein, right? And about 
30 to 40 percent of lipids and also about 1 to 10 percent of carbohydrates. All right, by composition of biomolecules, we can actually come to the strong terms of percentage of the biomolecules we have in our biological membrane. The biological membrane is made up of 60% of protein, about 30 to 40% of lipids, and about 1 to 10 to 1 to 10 to of carbohydrates. All right? So this is what actually makes our biological method. In the respect of the carbohydrate content of a typical biological member, we have what we call um, the glycophorin, for instance, on the red cell membrane, the glycophorin. This is a complex of carbohydrate moiety with a protein, uh, a complex of carbohydrates. In other words, glycophorin is a form of glycoprotein, playing a receptive function. They are more of a receptor. Receptive function are the membrane level. All right, so, Why don't you also uh, uh, okay, this is a typical structure of a biological membrane. Okay. We were talking about the characteristics of a biological membrane all the time. We said a typical biological membrane, they are selectively pathway. They selectively permeate a particular molecules to cross through their membrane, all right? Another important function of the biological membrane is that uh, they are amphipathic in nature. So it's a characteristic that leads to a function for a biological membrane. They are amphipathic in nature. And when we say amphipathic in nature, what do we mean by the amphipathic nature of the biological membrane? We are talking about they are hydrophobic, hydrophobic properties which are being mediated by the fatty acid hydrophobic, hydrophobic tail, right? And we also talk about the polar egg which is hydrophilic, water love in the nature, and this brings about its polarity. So, combining these two characteristics of a biological membrane, we arrive at amphipathic, amphipathic nature, dual nature of a biological membrane. They are hydrophobic, they are hydrophilic, all right? All right, we've talked about the integral protein, the peripheral protein, transferable protein, and how they're complex together. All right, okay. Another important uh, area I also want to talk about today is a fluid mosaic model of membrane structure. Fluid. Fluid, fluid mosaic model, mosaic model of a biological membrane. Fluid mosaic nature of a typical biological membrane. All right. Fluid mosaic nature of the of a typical biological membrane. Uh, I think I can I rub this off so that 
Okay, it's no need. All right. So basically, the fluid mosaic model, the fluid mosaic model of the balance of the element is like a form for complication. Second. So we have fluid mosaic. Model fluid mosaic model of a biological membrane. Fluid mosaic model of of a biological membrane. Oh, I mean there running. All right. Model of a biological membrane. Basically, this talks about the general hypothesis of knowledge about the how they are able to allow our uh, molecules move because the fluid solubility, or what we call the ability of the membrane to have this fluidity kind of nature is dependent on the liquid composition of a biological membrane, all right? And this talks about the interaction of the interaction of the phospholipid structural component of the biological membrane in association with the integral protein. So the fluidity of this biological membrane to allow structure to move in and out of the biological membrane is dependent on the nature of the lipids and make of this biological membrane. The composition of the lipids that constitutes this biological membrane is what kind of make you know, gives the biological membrane the ability to allow you know, molecules, substance to move across the membrane. And it has been proposed that this is a progressive knowledge that as the temperature of the biological membrane increases, as the temperature of the lipids that constitute the biological membrane increase, this brings about a disordered nature of the biological structural components from being that state to disorder states. And this is what we call the transitional temperature. This is what we call the transitional temperature. In which, when you increase the temperature of the composition of this biological membrane, then we're talking about the lipids that makes up this membrane. As you increase, as you increase the temperature, right? The fluidity ability of the biological membrane increase in temperature, or what we call increase in transitional membrane temperature, will bring about increase in fluidity of the lipid component, right? Lipid component of the membrane. And all of these properties facilitate the permeability to water of molecules from one region to the other. And this also promotes the lateral movement, the lateral movement of the integral proteins to facilitate movement of molecules across the membrane. And truly, this is what the fluid mosaic model that was being proposed and, you know, formed by Singer and Nicholson. And uh, it's now generally been accepted as it were, as a model in which molecules move from one part of the biological membrane to the other. All right. So, 
Uh, we're going to talk about uh, special proteins that makes our biological membrane, special proteins that makes our biological membrane. Uh, as part of integral protein, an example of integral protein that makes our biological membrane. Integral protein that makes our biological membrane is one band three protein. Band three protein. And another part, another example of integral protein that makes a biological membrane. Always, we are going to see when we talk about a typical membrane of our red blood cell. Glycophorin. 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 So these are typical integral protein that makes our biological membrane. All right. Okay. Glycophorin. Glycophorin and pancreas. They are typical example of it of an integral protein that makes our biological membrane, especially in the red blood cells. All right, we want to also talk about peripheral protein. The peripheral protein. It's a typical example of a peripheral protein, typical example of a peripheral protein, example of a typical peripheral protein typical example of peripheral protein, let's, let's make it visible as much Typical example of the peripheral protein, we have spectrin. Spectrin. Two, we have nantyrene. Three, we have actin. These are the type of the peripheral protein which we can actually identify with as an example of a typical uh, peripheral protein we will actually have in our biological memory. All right, so we're gonna move to the next uh, topic we want to also talk about, all right. All right, uh, we're going to talk about the functions of the biological membrane, basically. The functions of biological membrane, basically. Uh, the major functions of this uh, biological membrane they are, they is to allow movement of different compounds to go across the biological membrane. So the membrane is serving as a border or a barrier in which to regulate the amount of molecules that crosses it. All right? And what are these molecules? Our sugars, our proteins, our amino acids, our hormones, our ions. These are the major uh, molecules and substances that truly passes through this biological memory. A typical example of a transmembrane protein is our iron channels. A typical example of a transmembrane protein is a transmembrane is our iron channels. Iron channels. We have the frame ion channels, the channels for sodium, the channel for potassium, the channel for 
chloride ion the channel for calcium. All of these are ion channels. They are transmembrane protein channels that allow the movement of ions across this biological membrane. And talking about these channels, we will actually have what we call the ligand gate channels. We we'll have ligand gate channels. Ligand gate channels. Ligand gate channels. We will have what we call the ligand gate channels. Ligand gate channels. We will also have what we call the voltage gate channel. Ligand gate channels. We have ligand gate channels. Channel. We also have a voltage gate charge channel. All right. These are the type of ion channels that are being formed as a transmembrane type of channel, transmembrane channel. So basically, the light and gravity channels they occur when a specific molecule, such as O1 or trans neuron transmitters, binds to the receptor at the level of the biological membrane. To cause a signal transduction. Hello? All right. So, these are the kind of channels we will talk about. All right. So, quickly, please. All right, these are the type of the channels we will actually have in our biological membrane. And uh, basically, the difference between the voltage gate channel and the ligand gate channel is the fact that uh, the voltage gate channel, this is this open in rascals. So, potential changes at the level of the memory. Potential changes. Potential changes. Change in potential. And this occur as a result of ligand binding to the receptor at the level of the membrane. And this will trigger the opening of the channels that are present are the membrane. All right. And we also have what we call the water channels. The water channels are the level of the balance movement, which are basically the aquaporins, especially the collecting ducts of the renal system. Of the kidney, the collagen tissues of the renal system. Uh, this is provided to facilitate the movement of water across the collecting duct, in which it brings about increased reabsorption under the influence of some hormones, such as APH. All right? So we have that channels as uh, an example of a channel membrane, transmembrana protein, which are located in the collecting duct, right. All right, so. These are the Trees running, okay. Can I go here? All right, so thank you.
Sí, con él. All right. Así. Sorry, excuse me, I'm going to connect the battery soon.